another thing, another myth I want to point out, and is the whole wearing of green. Sorry to tell you, Patrick didn't wear green. The people of St. Patrick, his disciples, didn't wear green to honor him. We Americans have decided green is the land, is the color for Northern Ireland, or for Ireland in general. But his people wore light blue to honor St. Patrick. And their day to celebrate St. Patrick's Day was a day of reflection, prayer, and meditation. That is a celebration we need to fit in the middle of Lent, right? That is the kind of thing we need to do in the middle of Lent, to stop and reflect and learn. So where am I going with this? It's a good question. I'm glad you asked. I know it's in your head. Uh, is contextualization unbiblical? Is what he did wrong? Well, let me, uh, let's open the book of Acts. Well, I'm going to come to you out of chapter 18, well, chapter 17 in a second. Um, but we're going to talk about another guy who understood the value of preaching the gospel in context telling other people about Christ, using what's around them. And this is one of the, everybody's favorite characters in the Bible, Paul the Apostle. Brief history of Paul. We know Paul was the guy who killed people, right? And we see him first in chapter 8 when Stephen, or chapter 7 and 8 when Stephen, the first martyr, gets stoned to death. And for those of you who don't know, that means he was thrown with stones, not that he was stoned. <laughs> Um, and they, we see it says Paul was, and the man named Saul was standing there nodding in approval. Then in chapter 9, we read the story, he's riding his horse, and he's got a whole bunch of people, he's going to Damascus to kill Christians, to, to persecute them, to kick them out, to say, enough is enough with you guys, you guys are evil, you guys, you guys are wrong, we just want you to die, so get out and shut up. And in the middle of that journey, this light from heaven falls down on him, and he is suddenly blind. And God calls him and says, you are now going to serve me. <coughs> How do you say no to that? You know? So now we have Paul, who, took, who is now going across the lands, going around the world, preaching the gospel of Christ. And I <coughs> preaching redemption. We've been going through the past four weeks. We've been talking about the book of Ruth. We've been talking about how it's the story of redemption. And how that God gives worthless people a second chance. How God gives us worthless people second chances to live. Paul knew this more so than anybody else. Because he saw how he was worthless, how he was evil, how he was wrong, how he had all these negative things that were going to happen to him in his life. And God gave him a new beginning, a new creation. And he was so on fire for God, he was so caught up in this that he was telling everybody in every situation that he's going to go into. In verse six, in chapter sixteen, I'm going to jump. We see stories of him talking to people in the in the um, marketplace. He took God to the marketplace and was able to communicate to them where they were and how they were sitting. He took God to the synagogue. He started telling people in the synagogue and explaining the scriptures from the Jewish perspective where he was coming from where this Jesus fits in into their society. He took God and Christ to the poor, and he told them about Christ. He took God to the rich, he told them about Christ. And he used things in their own world to show them this. And the best example of this is in chapter 17, starting with verse 22. <clears throat> some places, in some scripture has it, uh, called this Mars Hill. Mine calls it the Areopagus. Here's a Greek word for it. And Areopagus, Athens, Athens, is a place where everybody got together and they sat there and they talked philosophically. 
They waxed philosophical about everything. They talked over the, the newest thoughts. These are where all the big wigs like to sit down and think. And they like to talk about their thoughts. And it's kind of like the McDonald's when all the old guys get together to solve all the problems of the world. They just like to share their thoughts and their ideas. They may not tell anybody later, but they like to share ideas. And if there's a new idea, they're going to do it. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and read some scripture in this. Let's make this a sermon. So Paul, starting with verse 22. So Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God. What therefore you worship is unknown, I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in the temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything. <clears throat> Since he himself co gives to all mankind life and breath and everything, and he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God in the hope that they might feel their way toward him to find him. Yet he is actually not far from each of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we sought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and the imagination of men. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And one of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. <clears throat> Don't want to really look at what he said. How he said. See, a few days ago, before he came here, he walked in out of the poor guys, out of the marketplace, out of getting people converted. And he walked out of the synagogue. You know, he was a man who could fit in anywhere. He said in the or in one of his letters, I've become all men, all things to all men, so I might win some. I said, oh, that's a hard thing to do, right? I, I don't. There, I was sitting here talking to engineers on campus. I'm an art guy. I'm a drama guy, dude. I, I know art and acting and photography and stuff and some things, but then I'm sitting there talking to some engineers and listening to them. I have no idea how to relate to engineers. I have a good <laughs> I have no idea how to talk to lawyers. Right? We got one guy, one of the one of my supervisors, graduated from my law area. So he, he he's got a legal mindset and an order mindset. I my mind looks, works like this. There's a thought. Okay, you know, <laughs> we'll take this one right here and put it together. Hey, that worked. And we run into communication problems. Paul, he just stepped into this place where you know most people would feel out of place. And he felt at ease. He felt at home. He felt in a place that he could just take, go from one place to another place and fit in perfectly. And he used what was around them at the time. See, Athens, if you know anything about Greeks, they had a lot of gods. Right? They had a God for everything. <laughs> they had a God for, you know, water. They had a God for the rainstorms. They had a God for horses. They had a God for mice. They had a God for cockroaches. They had gods for every moment of their lives. And every big thing happened, some God did. If there was an accident, God was, one God was pissed off or something. Who knows? we got to sacrifice that God. And Athens was the collection point. They didn't just collect Greek gods. They started collecting Roman gods. They collected Egyptian gods. Somebody came into the town with a new god. They're like, hey, let's build an altar for your god. We'll worship that one too. They wanted to cover all their bases. All of them. So they even built this one place. This altar to an unknown god. 
We don't know who this is. There might be another guy out there. Let's be on the safe side. Let's build another altar just in case we missed one.